Hello, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and today we're covering every category in makeup and my top picks for the year of 2022. So if you like these types of videos, I hope you'll stick around, hang out, keep watching. Let's dive in to the best of the best, the creme de la creme of 2022. All right, so welcome. Thanks for being here. We are midway through January, which is nuts. And I did put a poll up. You asked and you shall receive. So I didn't know how I wanted to approach this. I've touched on this in a couple videos. I thought about doing what I used the most. I thought about doing a roundup of all of my favorites. And then I sat down to make that list and it became overwhelming. And then choosing what I use the most kind of ties in with the direction I'm going today, which is naming the top three in each category. I'm not going to cover pricing in this video. I will, however, go into why it's my favorite, why I chose it. We're going to do three for each category. A couple of categories I will give honorable mention to, but I figured this would be the easiest way to get through this list and also keep me to a minimum in terms of what is the tippy top because I'll be honest with you I share in my fail videos the products that don't end up sticking around in my collection and I don't keep products that I don't absolutely love unless it's something very special like the Barbie Pure collab and the Trixie Juno palette that I might not use, but I keep it for the packaging and like the collector aspect of it. And really those are the only two things that fall into that category. There's a couple things I'll keep on hand that I'm trying to dupe out. But what I'm getting at is everything in my collection is a favorite and creme de la creme to me. I don't build a backlog. So I had to be very discerning when it came to what my favorites were for makeup specifically. So we did go with the top three. That said, let's dive in. I have my list in front of me. I feel like a regular old news anchor. I'm going to move off to the side here so we can insert pictures as we talk through some products. So I'm not going to cover skin prep. I'll be covering that in skincare and body care, which I plan on filming either today or tomorrow. So that will go up shortly after this. Honestly, depending on editing, Regardless, let's jump into foundation. So if you watched what I learned in makeup this year, it's definitely going to drastically impact the choices that I made for my top three foundations. My number one pick for foundation this year is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I wear mine in Mont Blanc. It's what I have on today. I wear it in most, if not just about all of my videos and this was a complete shock to me because the next foundation we'll talk about had this spot for all of last year however what i have found with the nars is it gives me a little bit less dewy of a look than the next foundation don't get me wrong i'm still dewy in person and on camera but it's so skin like in terms of texture on me and I do have to powder it in strategic areas, but I don't get transfer like I have with some other foundations. And what I love is I get a pretty good amount of coverage with a light layer. I get a medium coverage with a light layer. It looks like skin in real life and on camera. Also, one of the biggest things and a theme you'll see throughout these foundations is that this does not dry out on my skin. I think because it does stay a little tacky and a little kind of dewy and moisturizing, it moisturizes throughout the day so I don't get those weird patches where it's breaking up or drying out on my skin even when I have texture from acne or acne scarring. And I it lasts really well on me. And I think back in the day, this is what I was hoping the NARS Radiant Foundation would do for me but this is everything I could want in a foundation. The bottle has lasted me so long. I've worn this pretty much as my go-to daily foundation outside of when I wear the next two most of the year since I got it in April, I think. And man, that thing's only like a quarter of the way through. I use like 
two quarter pumps because that's the other thing. The pump is very controllable, which I also very much so appreciate. It's just, this is the foundation that I would recommend if you have similar skin to mine, because keep in mind, these base products are going to be very particular to what kind of skin type that you have. I just watched Khaki's roundups and I know that she wasn't a huge fan of this foundation, but if you have dry dehydrated skin like mine, very textured skin, you find that you need to be more hydrated throughout the day in your foundation or it breaks up and kind of breaks down and dries out, maybe give this one a shot to get a sample and pick it up. I, I love it. It is very blurring. I, my skin does not look this good with other foundations on camera or in real life. Then number two on my list is the foundation that was in the first spot last year, and that is the Chantecaille Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation. This is the foundation that changed the game for me in terms of foundations and gave me hope that I could find formulations that my skin needed. A lot of the times, like I just mentioned, I was getting that kind of dried, flaky, cracky, breakup looking foundation, especially around my mouth, around my nose, and it just wasn't super flattering, especially a couple hours after wear. The Chantecaille is what changed that for me. It is basically a gel moisturizer with pigment. It has a lot of skincare benefits to it. It is very pricey. Mine went a decent way, if I recall. It lasted me at least six months, and that was my daily foundation at the time. And you can always get it on sale at Nordstrom. You can use Nordstrom Rewards to pay for it. Chantecaille has regular sales 20 to 25% off, so I wouldn't pay full price for it. I would at least get a sale or a coupon for it. But it's just lovely. My skin also really loves it. And what I use it for now is if I want to be super dewy because it is a very dewy foundation. It's more dewy than what I have on right now. But if my skin is in a state, it's upset, it's breaking out, it's itchy, it's just inflamed, I will use that foundation because it does seem to soothe my skin. And that's kind of honestly what really kicked off algae derivatives and C derived ingredients in skincare helping my skin because that really does make my skin better when I wear it. So if you want your foundation to do more for you than just look nice, I, I really love the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel. And I don't know if I mentioned, it is kind of a light medium up to a, a pretty strong medium depending on how you build it. I really love it. It kind of smooths everything out. It almost feels like that gel. Like if it was one of those commercials on TV where they would have like a rough texture like this and the gel would just slide and lay over. I feel like it does kind of smooth out the skin. It's, oh God, it's so beautiful. I just love it. But I have been wearing the NARS more and I, I tend to reach for the NARS more when I want to look more glam and that's just the mood that I've been in this year specifically. And then in third place is the Merit Complexion Stick. I got this probably midway through this year and I stinking love that. It is another one that if I, I do have to focus more on prep, skin prep with this foundation, but if I do my skin prep well, I don't get the breakup that I do. It's not as long lasting as the Chantecaille and definitely not as long lasting as the NARS, but it's a really nice foundation in a stick form that you can just whack on super fast. I talk about it in the Merit video I do a comparison with the Salt New York Sneaky Balm, and I also talk about it in my car makeup routine video. Go check those out if you want all of the kind of details, price, all of that. I just love that thing. I'm so happy they listened to consumers and added more product in. I've been using mine quite a bit. I can use it as foundation and concealer. I rank it above the Westman Atelier Vital Foundation Stick. I just really, I'm kind of blown away by that brand this year, I have to say. Not all of the products are top ranking products for me, but that one definitely is. And then honorable mention, I'm going to give to two. The first is the It Cosmetics CC Cream. It's not in the top three because I really only wear it in the summer. And I do that because the SPF 50 factor in it. Now, granted, I don't recommend, and I personally do not rely on my makeup for SPF. I'm always wearing an SPF underneath. I'm reapplying when I need to throughout the day. But 
I talked about this in my kind of like bulletproof makeup video. I went to an air show years and years ago because I've been wearing It Cosmetics CC Cream, the original, in fair for almost a decade at this point. I went to an air show. I got so burnt that I was pretty much purple and my face was completely unscathed and it's 100% because of that SPF 50 factor. And also I feel like that's a thick, a thick foundation. So it's probably a physical barrier itself. You know what I mean? So I do trust in that and I like to wear it in the summer. It also stays put for me in the summer and kind of jives with my skin better in the summer. NARS and Chantikai and Merit all do too, but I do like it cosmetics, but only in the summer. So honorable mention. And then I do want to give honorable mention to Rare Beauty, the, um, SPF 30, I think, Tinted Moisturizer. If the Chantikai is just out of your budget, will never be in your budget. But all of the things that I said about it being hydrating throughout the day, kind of smoothing over the surface with that gel texture. The Rare Beauty is not a dupe. It doesn't have the same texture, not as kind of gel, but it is very moisturizing without being heavy. It gives light medium coverage. You could build it to medium, but it does the same thing for me where it keeps me hydrated throughout the day and it kind of self levels the skin, kind of smooths over those rough patches, like we said. And I do love the price point that Rare Beauty products are at. So I wanted to throw that in there as honorable mention if the Chantikai is just outside of the budget. That's not something that I would purchase lightly. And again, full price, I wouldn't. So love the rare beauty for that. All right, moving into concealer. I feel like this might not shock anybody. If you are not new on my channel, you already know what I'm about to say. Rose Ink Concealer in LX0101. I have worn that pretty much every day this year. It's slightly brightening, but I love the formula. It is full coverage so that I know I can strategically place it to get a a very glam look even with maybe these lighter coverage foundations but it still jives with lighter coverage foundations you can blend it out it's very potent it lasts a long time i'm on my second tube and it's not because i ran through product it's because it just started to get old and dried out i love that concealer so much it is very skin like it, i wouldn't call it matte i wouldn't call it dewy it's somewhere in the middle of that, probably a little bit more towards matte. I need to come up with my own scale of this because skin light can mean a lot of different things depending on how you want your skin to look, but it does give me an airbrushed finish. It lasts all day. It's slightly brightening, which is a feat for my skin tone for a lot of brands, honestly. And I just love it. The Big Fat Dough applicator, the packaging itself, it's just an absolute delight to interact with every day. I know I can depend on it, and I also love using it as an eye primer to block out the veins and prep my eyelid for whatever I'm gonna be using on it that day. It's my favorite. If you have similar skin type to me, that is what I would recommend to you. Then coming in second on the list is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I love this. I will say if I'm doing just a concealer look, sometimes the rose ink can look a little out of place. So on days where I want to wear just concealer, no foundation whatsoever, it's going to be the Kosas Revealer Concealer. Absolutely phenomenal. It's not as high coverage as the rose ink. The rose ink is like coverage. Kosas is probably eh, down here. It's definitely more than a medium to me and can be built to more than a medium, but I think a medium is where it immediately loves to live. I just really love it. It is also very skin-like, more dewy than the um, Rose Ink, but still not out of place under the eyes. It's a fabulous product. My only caveat with it is that within, you kind of have to use it up within the first six months or it starts to go off and you'll know by the smell. It almost smells like blue cheese to me. It's very odd, but I, that's one of the hangups I have with it. You are going to be replacing it, but if it's the product that you're using every day, I think it's well worth it. You can always get it on sale at Kosas in a kit at Kosas website. 
the Sephora sale, the Credo sale, there's plenty of chances to get it um, discounted. So be on the lookout for that. But I do really love that concealer. It's a good one. Then third and final concealer is going to be from Thrive Cosmetics. I love this concealer. This is the lightest coverage concealer I've ever owned and still wanted to wear. Sinks, it, it's one of those ones where the Kosas and the Rose Ink kind of sit on the skin, not in a bad way, they still look nice, but Thrive Cosmetics feels like it sinks into the skin. It is undetectable on the skin. It is lighter coverage. But I absolutely love this concealer on days where I want it to look like I have absolutely nothing on my face and I'm just pretty. And I will also say I used this on a lot of the younger girls that I did for weddings this year, teenagers and below, and I feel like it would be an excellent starting place uh, for more natural makeup as a young person. But I also think it is a beautiful formula for mature skin. It's one of those ones that really kind of spams the whole range. And I, I would highly recommend it. I also love Thrive as a company. But those are my three top concealers. I feel like that in itself is the perfect little wardrobe of concealers and gives me a range of looks depending on what I'm feeling for that day, especially with the three foundations that I spoke about before. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, moving on to powder. My top powder for this year is the Westman Atelier. And I am kind of bummed about that because it's so expensive, but also very excited about that because I think this is going to be the powder for you. One, if you can find a shade that's going to fit the purpose that you have. I have translucent. I'm very fair. I know that some people have used it and found that it's too brightening, the translucent, because it's you get some of that white through. They do have, I think, five or six shades. I'll pop them up on the screen here. So if you can find a shade, number one. Number two, it's in your budget. Number three, you can get it on sale. I'm pretty sure I got mine on sale at Credo. <laughs> You can also get it on sale at Sephora. And the last bit I will say is if you have tried powder after powder, even the Kosas, and it still looks like powder and then a layer of texture that you don't want on your face and you don't want to be super matte, but you want to tame the shine in certain areas, then I would tell you that this powder is worth trying. If that does not apply to you, I think you're fine to skip this. It's a powder. I don't think that it's done wonders for my skin, but I think it looks beautiful on my skin and I can depend on it. And that's why it's my top pick. I've used it the most and I just, I love it. But in second place is House Labs Bio Blurring Translucent Setting Powder. I mean, I have the shade translucent. Again, there's multiple shades. This is a fabulous powder. This is blurring. That's the other thing. The Westman Atelier does blur too, but also looks like absolutely nothing. The House Labs, very blurring. Gorgeous finish. I get a little bit more matte of a finish than the Westman Atelier. The Westman Atelier is like nothing unless you build it up. The House Labs is so gorgeous. It's a little bit more matte, but in a, a beautiful way very blurring. I love the packaging. I love that it has the net and it's very clean for being a loose powder. Westman Atelier being pressed is a lot kind of like less messy for me, but the House Labs is not messy whatsoever. It is stunning. It's blurring without adding any glitter or kind of shine. It's just, it's so, it's magnificent. I wanted to say the only thing is it's slightly heavier looking on my skin than Westman Atelier. If I want something that's truly not detectable, I go with Westman Atelier. House Labs is not, it does not look cakey whatsoever. These are the only two powders other than the last one that we'll cover that don't make me look cakey at all. And the price point of House Labs is not bad, not cheap, but it's not bad. And again, Sephora sale strike while it's hot, you know? 
That said, the third powder was the top of my list before these two came in and knocked it out this year. And I would say if Westman Atelier is out of your budget, but the way I described it, you're dying to get your hands on, I implore you to check out this powder that I'm about to talk about now, which is the Well People. This was the only setting powder that worked for me for the longest time. Again, the translucent shade can be brightening on some people. It is a, it used to be called the bio-based brightener, baked brightener powder. I can never remember the new name, but I, again, it'll be listed down below and on the screen. This is such a fabulous powder for $20. You can get it on Ulta. You can get it through Well People's site. You can also get it on Credo. If you hit the Credo sale, you're saving 20, 25%. It's even more affordable. Target is also carrying Well People. This is the closest thing to Westman Atelier that I have used, especially at the price point. I think it's worth it. There's shimmer to it, but it doesn't come across as glitter on the skin. It also gives you kind of that blurred effect, that light reflecting, light refracting effect without adding glitter or a hard sheen for me personally, but I like having sheen to my skin. So take that with a grain of salt. But if you can't get your hands on the Westman Atelier, check out Wild People. I love their powders. I'm dying to try their blushes. Moving into bronzer, in our top place, we have the Gucci Soleil Eclat Bronzer. I have mine in 01. It is a very rosy shade, and that is a big majority of why it is number one on this list. This is my perfect bronzer shade when I want to look like a bronzed goddess because I need that little bit of rosiness in it for it to be believable as a true bronze on my skin. I also love the formula and I also love the packaging. The packaging is just absolutely stunning. It's such a pleasure to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Same with the Westman Atelier powder. That thing's heavy for that. It's little. Though she is little, she is mighty. The Gucci, on the other hand, it's weighty, but not as weighty as the Westman Atelier, but it's beautiful. I love that robin's egg blue and the gold. Oh, it's fabulous. I've never touched the brush it comes with. But the color and the packaging aside, the formula of this is beautiful. I think that it gives a very blurring finish on the cheeks. There's no shimmer in it whatsoever. It says it's matte, but it gives me almost satin vibes. It's not so matte that you look powdered down. It still kind of like sinks into the skin and it sits on the foundation in a way that doesn't look powdery whatsoever. I just absolutely love that. Again, that's another one that is higher in price, but I would implore you to check out sales. Nordstrom always matches the other department stores. You can get it on sale there. You can get it on sale at Sephora. But I highly recommend that, especially if you are fair, neutral, leaning, yellow, green, either of those. But in second place is going to be the Patrick Toshi Statuesque Bronzer Contour Duo. I have mine in the shade, I said it already, She's Statuesque. I love that thing. That is the best contour. So we're gonna kind of like sneak contour in this discussion. Best contour, it is a kind of clear pigment base, meaning it doesn't have a white or a brown pigment base. So it goes on almost translucent with that color so that it's such a believable shadow. And getting contours in my hand that function that way have been a game changer where it's not a stark line that you have to work to blend out. These really do just add a perfect amount of shadow. And the color of this is absolutely stunning. I love that cream. It doesn't, I don't believe it dries down fully, but it's not sticky. I've never had an issue with that. But the bronzer in this is in second place for me because I love that formula. It's just the color. I think if it had the color of the Gucci, it would probably be above the Gucci because again, it's blurring. That powder is just very, very finely milled and beautiful. And I know that I will probably hit pan on the bronzer, but I definitely will hit pan on the contour. And that is my number one contour. And that is much more affordable than some of the other ones that I've talked about. And again, a sale. I just picked this up for my sister for Christmas 
and I can't wait to get her thoughts back on it because she's just getting into bronzer and contour. I think it would be very beginner friendly. If I had to start my kit from scratch, it would be the one that I bought even over the Gucci, even though the Gucci is like my, the bronzer that was made for me. I still think I'd go with the Patrick Ta because of the versatility and the fact that the contour is in there too. Then in third place, I feel kind of bad sneaking this in as third place, but I can't stop using it since I picked it up and it's the Makeup by Mario Skin Perfector in the shade Light 01. What an outstanding cream. The only thing that could ever make it better is if somehow it was in a stick formula, but then I think the formula would have to change and I don't want it to. It's absolutely stunning. Again, it's blurring. It's the perfect shade. It's almost in the middle of the Patrick Ta and Gucci for me shade wise. And I just love it so much. It's such an easy product to use. I don't have to think about it. I do have to think about the Gucci and the Patrick Ta a little bit more to make sure that I'm blending and it is not oversaturated on my skin. Whereas the light shade in the Makeup by Mario is just a very believable bronzer on me for any time of the year when I just want to add dimension and not like a bronze look. That's the one I'll go for. But I like to look really bronzed, which is why the Gucci's in number one. It makes me the bronziest, just saying. But then I do want to give honorable mention to the Merit Bronzer Stick. As far as sticks go, I like that one the best. I don't even know if it's because of the formula because I would put Rare Beauty above that, but I think it's because of the color and the convenience in one. If Rare Beauty had a color that was more my speed, I think it would knock that one out. But I wanted to throw that in there because I do love those products. And then Salt New York Contour. If you just need a contour, you don't want to invest in the Patrick Ta. The Salt New York Contour is the goat of contours. I think I would put that above Patrick Ta. It's just I end up reaching for Patrick Ta more because convenience, you know? All right, moving into blush. Number one on my list. And I, I went back and forth. I think if we were going by color, this would still be the same. And I'll tell you those exact colors, but I'm going off of formula. So my number one formula for blush this year should come as no shock to anyone. It is Phytosurgeon's Skin Spark Blush. Yeah, I'm going off the top of my head because I just wrote down the brand. <laughs> Skin Spark Br Blush, excuse me. If I had to choose a color, it would be Condensate. I've been waiting on a dupe for ColourPop Aphrodisiac for, gosh, four years. Four years now. And Phytosurgeon's delivered. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And... All of the colors are outstanding. I have an entire video where I swatch them on my hand and my cheeks. Go check that out if you're interested. Best formula, best, best, best formula on the market and I don't foresee that changing. Especially if I were to say my top three creams and my top three powders, it would never be knocked out, ever. I don't even know if I can say more about that. I'm like gonna cut that one short because I have entire videos dedicated to that. I really implore you to go check them out. Phytosurgeons is worth every penny. I'm so sorry if you're in the UK because you deserve to try these products and one day I hope that you can, but they're just phenomenal. <laughs> and I'm, I can't lie to myself or to you. They're the, the number one. Then second in formula, is going to be the biggest underdog of 2022, which is the Balm Powder Blushes. Why are we all sleeping on these? I'm going to do another underrated products and we're gonna wax poetic for probably 20 minutes on the fact that we're all sleeping on the Balm Powder Blushes. If I had to choose a color, it should be no shock that it is the Desert Bronzer Blush Staining Powder. That comes kind of close to um, Aphrodisiac from ColourPop for me, but it is a little bit more on the brown tan side. It is gorgeous. It is gorgeous on the eyes, gorgeous on the cheeks, 
blurs. It has just a bit of sheen to it that blurs the skin. It doesn't look shiny or glittery. I have since picked up a ton more shade on Black Friday. They all perform exactly the same beautiful airbrushed finish. If you are a powder blush gal, you like the blur and you want juicy but not dewy cheeks, like a satin juice, you know, please go check the balm out there. I think they're around $20. I got mine 40% on, on Black Friday. They also offer minis and palettes. We need to talk about the balm. They also tout themselves as clean, but I feel like they're not in your face about it. I don't know. I just, we need to talk about them more. I need to get more people to try them so that they can talk about them on their channels too. If you're watching this, please try the balm blushes, please. Then third is going to be the matte glow play blushes, which is kind of a hybrid. So we've got a cream of powder and like a cream to powder. Such a unique formula. Please go to a matte counter and play with that formula because you will be, it's so much fun. The kid and you will come out. It's almost like a whipped mousse Play-Doh because it has give, and I have videos on this as well. It has give, but it's not sticky. It almost has like a silicone-y feel, dry on the skin. Again, another airbrush product. It's just so fabulous. My favorite shades are So Natural and Blush Please. I think Blush Please being my favorite. I go back and forth. One's more peachy, one's more pink. They're, they're stunning. They have so many other stunning colors that I would love to pick up. It's just, yeah, such a great formula, but I will put the balm higher. Guys, I'm telling you, that blush is worth checking out. All right, we're going to knock out highlighter. This is going to be a quick one. I only own, I honestly think, two highlighters. Well, oh no. I was going to say, I only own two highlighters, both from Beauty Pie, and it's because I don't consider the Phytosurgeon Spectral Shines highlighters in my collection. So I am going to put this in this category. So if I were to include the Spectral Shine, even though I use them as a blurring product, my favorite highlighter is going to be Phytosurgeon Spectral Shines, and specifically shade-wise for me is Divine Daylight because it does give me a nice sheen but it's close enough to my skin tone that I bring it in close to my nose to airbrush that area. So it's kind of a hybrid product to me. It's like a finishing product and a highlighter. It's such an incredible formula. Again, check out my phytosurgeons video because you are gonna need some context and instruction on how to use it because it is such an innovative formula that you are going to have to learn how to work with it, but it will blur, 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 and it also adds, you can see in the video that I do of phytosurgeons, it almost takes down shine like I have here in a way that still catches the light and diffuses it. So you still get a glow, but it's a flattering glow that will not show any texture that you have. I mean, you can only go so far with makeup and texture. I think we all get that, but like it camouflages texture so well. I just, oh, fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. But if I had to choose just a straight up highlighter, it's going to be the Beauty Pie Triple Beauty Luminizing Wand. Only comes in one shade. It is Dead Ringer a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury, but I think the color is better. It's not as gold. It's a true neutral champagne beige absolutely stunning. It doesn't lean too gold. It doesn't lean too silver. Perfectly brightening, very brightening. I, it sinks right into the skin. It's not glittery. It just, it adds a wapow shine, but it can be tamed down to be a little bit more elegant, but it's definitely going to give you more of an impact than the phytosurgeons. That, those two, those highlighters, that's all I need. Like I see new highlighters come out and I'm like, but what, what can it do that's better than those two? You know, moving into another easy for me category is eyebrows. I use two types of products on my eyebrows every single day, a gel and a pencil. The Merit 1980 Pomade, I have the shade Blonde, I think, 
is the best brow gel for me because it defines the hairs and I'll get to why that's important in just a second defines the hairs, but it doesn't build up too much gel on each individual hair. It's just the perfect amount. I can wear it on its own and it gives me enough definition that I feel confident, but I can layer it over a pencil and it doesn't add too much color. It's just the sweet spot for me. So I absolutely love that one. And it did knock the Kosas gel out because I noticed that that one was kind of not, it wasn't clumping up, but it was adding too much gel to individual lashes and it was too much work to have to go through and kind of clean that up. But my favorite pencil is going to be the Kosas pencil. I like that because I can get quite a stark eyebrow. I'm actually wearing the Benefit Fiber Plus and I have a weird relationship with that. We'll cover that one day when it's in my empties maybe, but the Kosas gives me a little bit stronger of a brow, which I really like. And that lays down enough wax that I don't need to add a ton of product in my brow gel from a color depositing standpoint because I don't want it to look chunky and weird. And because I go in with my pencil first and get the shape, I'm relying on my brow gel to then define the hair so that it doesn't look super blocky and it looks more natural. The Kosas and the Merit together is just wonderful. I will say honorable mention is this benefit volumizing fiber plus brow, I think is what it's called. I just, I flip flop and it's, it's not because the product doesn't perform. The pencil is great. It is a very soft pencil. So if you're new to drawing brows or you like a really soft look, it's a perfect pencil for that because it's going to be really hard for you to overdo it. However, I tend to like a stronger brow than what it gives. And that's why I go back and forth. I like this. It's just not the brow that I want. I'm just trying to use it up, but that's honorable mention, I, I suppose. Okay, moving into single shadows. Now, I I got torn on this. I listed them by individual shades, but then I sat down and I thought about it, and the formulas kind of fall in this order too. And I will say that my number one single shadow for the year is... Wild Violet by Beauty Pie, the eyeshadow sticks. These are just, they're almost a dead ringer dupe formula wise to the Bobbi Brown and the Laura Mercier. They can give just as much impact on the shine and the formula itself feels the same where it is very easily and creamy, creamy, very easily and creamy. It very easily goes on and is creamy, but then sets down fully, gives that impact, and they're just fantastic. Wild Violet is a beautiful color for hazel eyes. If you are fair, neutral, leaning yellow, green like I am, and you have hazel eyes, that color is going to do wonders for the color of your eyes. And they're so affordable. I oh, It's just so good. That formula is really good. I don't think that formula is number one for me, but that, that single shadow is definitely number one for me. Then the next one that I have listed is JD Glow Unexpected. And this one was tough for me from a formula standpoint. Color standpoint, I have used that shade so much this year. It is a stunning shade. A one and done all over the lid looks fabulous. Building up dimension with it looks fabulous into a smoky eye. And I can even use it on more impactful looks like the JLo look that I just posted. And it is phenomenal. It's gorgeous. It's smooth when you put it on. I don't get a ton of glitter fallout on my cheeks. It is an absolute pleasure to work with and it is insanely affordable. It is a 36 millimeter pan. And I think the highest it probably is is like $12 and JD Glow is always running some sort of discount. And I just... JD Glow should absolutely be on everyone's list to check out. Whether you like super foiled, metallic looking shadows, if you like duochromes, excuse me, multi-chromes, any type of high impact shadow, I would put my trust in JD Glow. I've loved every shade that I've purchased from them. That said, another brand that's right up there for me is Terra Moons. However, JD Glow does edge them out on formula because some of the Terra Moons can be flaky 
And I know that that's the nature of the beast, depending on the colors they're mixing together. But I, I guess I answered my own question. Unexpected by J.D. Glow's number two formula and color. Then I think this next one would be number one in formula, number three in color, and I will tell you why. And that is Fractal Freesia from Phytosurgeons. This is a workhorse. I top wedding makeup with it. I top my own look with it. I will top a strong wing liner with it. I will top a smoky eye with it. I will do it on its own in mascara. It's just the perfect neutral goldy silver glitter topper that can be worn on its own or make any shadow sparkly and fun. And the formula is incredible. It doesn't flake on me. It's just a winner all day. And the formula of the flash fluorescence eyeshadows from Phytosurgeons are just outstanding, especially for beginners or people who want to get out of the door quick but look like they put in effort. The formulas are just so agreeable and easy to use. The colors are stunning again. I have all of those um, swatched on my hand and eyes in that video, so go check that out. But formula number one, Fractal Freesia number three, just because it is a topper and I prefer some depth on my eyes more days than not, which is why I think Wild Violet would go above it. This next category was really hard for me and I still don't know that I'm fully landed on what it is yet, but that is palettes. And I don't think I can pick an order. These are all tied for number one. We're just gonna go through them. The first one is Olivia Palermo Beauty, the All Natural palette. This has gotten me through so many days where I don't know what I want to do with my makeup or when I travel. It has all of my kind of go-to looks in it. I do like to build structure around my winged liner looks with a taupe color in the crease and a brightening shade in the inner corner. It has that. It has quite possibly my very favorite one and done eyeshadow of all times. And it has a pop of color if you really want to play around. So when traveling, it's just a stunning palette. Olivia Palermo, Olivia Palermo knows what she's doing with hazel eyes. Also, the packaging's to die. That thing is a weapon. Probably weighs five pounds, or at least two to three pounds. It is insanely heavy, but it is also insanely gorgeous. And I think we sleep on her eyeshadow formula, but it's incredible. She adds so many multifaceted colored glitters in her shimmer shades that it plays on the eye in an incredible way. And I have a couple videos on her formula and those palettes, so go check that out. But she, you can tell that there's passion behind creating those colors and how they translate on eye colors. It, they're just, that is my favorite, my favorite palette. I think if we had to edge one out for number one, it would be that. Just sitting here getting re-excited really about it. I think that is my favorite. But then I think about the next two and I'm like, I couldn't live without them. I would purchase all three of these if my makeup was gone tomorrow. The second is going to be Hindash Butopsy Palette. Ugh, that thing pretty much gets used just about every day. If I need to back myself out of trouble, I pull that out. If I need to blur something out, I pull that out. If I need help blending, I pull that out. If I want to build a look on its own, I pull that out. It is just the palette that goes with everything. And I never used to be someone who would pull out a palette next to something I'm already using. If I pull out a palette, I used to just use whatever was in that. And that's what I was confined to for a look. This palette completely changed that for me. And I always have it out no matter what eye look I'm doing because it's just that dependable. And it has all of the shades that I would ever need to an adjust an eye look, to help blend an eye look, to help intensify and smoke out an eye look. It's just so good. And the formula is, it's very buildable, but easily built upon itself. So it's not that it's not pigmented in a bad way. It's just, if you want a wash, you can get a wash. If you want to build it up pretty stark, you absolutely can do that with very little work. But the way his powders 
blend and blur. It's just a very forgiving formula that still delivers. And you can tell that he has had so much experience using different formulas to get a very airbrushed, perfected finish. And he has perfected that formula to do exactly what he wants it to do. And if see this is why I just don't know which palette edges the other out because I think the only thing is that Hindash is all matte but I wouldn't want that to change because I love what it is it's just I like to play with my makeup so much that an all matte palette makes total sense in my collection and then having something like the Olivia Palermo or the next one where it has some you know, more impactful, shiny shades. I need them all, but oh gosh, if you can get your hands on Hindash Butopsy, you will not be disappointed. And I guarantee you that you will reach for that over and over again. It is, that is money well spent, even though it is not cheap. And I need to wrap it up on that because my throat's starting to hurt. The last palette is going to be the Aether Desert Sunset palette. I have waited for an eyeshadow palette to cover that mucky, greeny mustard brown because that looks very flattering on my skin tone. And the last time I had a palette that really nailed that for me was the Wet n Wild Color Icon. What was that green palette named? The really popular one, I'll pop it up right here. They have reformulated it and it's nowhere near what it used to be. I'm talking about like the 2010 version, which I still own one of for duping purposes. This is the closest I've ever come to that. Her shimmers are absolutely stunning. Her inner corner highlight shades are bright enough for me and my skin tone, which is somewhat difficult to find. I just, sure, oh. The whole ethos behind the brand, number one, but number two, the formula is absolutely fabulous and wears all day. And the colors that she chooses are just gorgeous. The Desert Sunset is everything I have waited for her to drop and beyond her, really. Like I've waited for that color story for so long and I am so happy that I have it and definitely in my top three. It's just very centered on like a warmer look, even though it's not... It's not like a red warmth, it's it's like a golden warmth, perfect for, for if you have yellow in your skin tone like I do. But it kind of, it pushes you into that more so than the flexibility that I have with Hindash, who is really kind of down the middle and offers both warm and cool and also neutral. And then the Olivia Palermo lives a little bit more in like a neutral vein for me with less of kind of that mustard and green, if that makes sense. But all three of those, like I said, I would absolutely run out and purchase if I lost all of my makeup, without a doubt. All right, moving into two more easy categories because I have a feeling I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> the next category is going to be eyeliner. I just picked two. For liquid liner, I would absolutely go with Beauty Pie. For the price, you can't beat it. It lasts all day. I've never had an issue with it. It's not too skippy. Fabulous. If you do not have a Beauty Pie membership, I would go with the Stila one. However, that's like three times the cost of the Beauty Pie, hence why Beauty Pie is number one for liquid on my list. And then as far as a pencil eyeliner goes, Victoria Beckham all the way. I can't tell you how distraught I am that I cannot find the black or the cocoa shade. And I'm really hoping I don't have to repurchase those because I'm on a no buy. But if I have to, I don't know that I can live without at least one of those right now. I, they're just amazing. Super, super creamy. Minimal effort to get them to glide on. They blend like a dream. And for me, when they set down, they don't go anywhere. I've been caught in a rainstorm and not a drip drop of black ran down my face. And I had heavy, I'll pop a picture up. I had heavy eyeliner on, okay? We were at a punk concert. I was living my high school fantasy, okay? I think that's all I have to say. They're just the best. Get them without the sharpener. They're 26. She does run sales throughout the year. I wish they were cheaper. However, 
to me, they're the best that money can buy in my book. Moving on to the next easy category is going to be mascara. If I had to choose only one mascara, it's going to be the Thrive Cosmetics. It's what I have on today. I love that it comes in different shades, black, blue, and brown. I wear crystal, the brown shade most. I love it. It is the best tubing mascara. It comes off in the largest chunks. You can stand in the shower and just pluck it away at the end of a long day. You don't have to rub. It is also phenomenal if you have allergies because it dries all the way down and there's no pollen or irritants sticking to your lashes. It doesn't flake and get in your eye and irritate your eye. It doesn't, I, you can cry in that stuff, okay? You can cry and not a drippy drop of black down your face. It, they're just, ugh. That mascara is fantastic, number one always. But then coming in at, I'm not gonna lie, pretty close second is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Easy to Use Waterproof. To easy to use, waterproof, easy to remove. I The name is just beyond. I think they're discontinuing this. I do want to try a few of the newer tubing mascaras coming out to see if there's a possible dupe. This one is half the price of the Thrive if you can find it. I have found it through Target. I hope that they don't discontinue it, but it is lighter and it adds more volume at the base of the lashes than the Thrive does. I like the look of it better than Thrive. It also removes just as well as Thrive, which a lot of the other tubing mascaras that I've tried do not. It also stays in place just as well. It's just the fact that they're probably gonna discontinue it and it only comes in black. If it came in brown, I Thrive might be dethroned, but you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> then the third mascara, and the one that actually like really blew my mind this year is the Beauty Pie Uber Youth Volume Mascara. The girlies were not lying about this one. I have been using Thrive for two years and have never strayed not a once since I started using that until this year, I started dabbling a little bit more and the L'Oreal got me, but this one is the only traditional mascara that I've wanted to wear in two years. The way it makes my lashes look fake is insane. It does remove fairly cleanly as far as traditional mascaras go. I do use a makeup remover or I end up using a balm cleanser and a microfiber towel, so that does help. But man, the payoff is more than worth it. I absolutely love this mascara. If you are a Beauty Pie member, highly recommend you check this out. I cannot wait to open up the primer that I just recently bought and put that with it. I think it's gonna be insane. It looks like false lashes. I love it so much. All right, we're gonna do another easy one. And then we're gonna get into the last four after that. We're getting there. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Lip liner, I have two listed here and it is formula and color. If I could only have two of these in my collection, I'm not even gonna do a third because I don't think that I would need it really. Number one's gonna be Fit Glow Lip Liner in Nude. It is the closest to my natural lip shade. It just adds a little bit of structure for me. The formula is fabulous. I just really love that lip liner. And then the second is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Lip Liner in Plumberry. That would be if I wanted to wear it with a red or a berry lip, which is my go-to statement. It's just, I can't get over the formula of that. And I think it was like two, three dollars. I would love to go back and see some of the other shades they have because I think it could easily dethrone the Fit Glow Vegan Lip Liner in Nude for me, but yeah, those are the two formulas that I think are worth every penny and are perfect for me. Just know that this is coming from someone who's not like obsessed with lip liner and does it more out of necessity than enjoying it. So I'm never probably gonna be like super extra with those picks. I think because lip liner to me is like a save versus splurge. Even though the Fit Glow is not cheap, you can get them in sets, but like that's why I'm not married to the Fit Glow necessarily. Like, if the Wet n Wild had the right color, I'd I'd be all all bored for that. They're good formulas. I don't want it to sound like they're not good formulas, but for me, I'd rather spend more on a foundation, a powder, 
than a lip liner. That's all. All right, moving into lips. You guys know this is hard for me, but also easy. It, it, like I know exactly which ones I would name, but then it's beyond just the three. So I am going to give you three formulas and then I'm going to give you honorable mention of two colors that fall outside of those formulas. My number one formula is going to be the Fit Glow Lip Serum. It just, I still have not come across a formula that was that pleasurable to use and plush and gel-like. It's fabulous. It nourishes my lips. It's just the bee's knees. Do not buy them at $42 or $38. Wait for a Fit Glow sale or use State of Kate's 20% off, which is Kate 20 do not pay full price for those. You can also get them in kits and add those discounts on top of it. They're wildly expensive, but especially if you're going to get just the one shade you wear every day, they're so worth it. They come with a lot of product. You can get even, you can get every bit of that product out. I pop the top off of the container and make sure I scrape every bit out. Those are worth it in my opinion. Second, is going to be the Live Tinted, which shocked the heck out of me because I thought for sure In Beauty would always be my second choice. The fit or the Live Tinted, man, the Hue Gloss, so good. I have pretty much emptied the beige pink shade. I think it's Proud. Man, those are some good lip glosses. They're unscented. The Fit Glow I didn't mention before has a vanilla scent. Live Tinted is unscented. Fat doe foot applicator with a dent in the middle so you get you just slather it on and you don't worry about having to dip a million times the formula is incredible it's gel like but a little bit of oily nourishment to it that kind of separates it from fit glow but probably the closest that i've found to fit glow not sticky at all highly highly recommend those alta lip tinted site or credo then my third place is and beauty lip glaze i have a video going through all of those they have since come out with a couple of new scents that i'm honestly not a huge huge fan of merlot was not great and the mystery was it was okay but if i had to choose one in beauty it would be either cookie or berry but go check that video out if you're interested in formula they bring me so much joy the packaging is cute the scents are to die for the finish looks beautiful on the lips. They nourish your lips. I've even worn them as my nighttime lip mask before. They're just so good. $15. Check them out. They're, they're perfect gifts. I've gifted them to pretty much every woman in my life. Most of them have raved to me. The others I just haven't asked. But <laughs> they're a crowd pleaser. They are lip smackers for adults, as Ingrid said. They're everything you could want. And then honorable mention is going to go to the shade specifically, Fenty Beauty Fruit Snacks. It is my perfect berry shade. I don't mind the formula. I wish it had a little bit more scent to it. The color is fabulous. The formula is good, but the color is fabulous. And then the Decorte Shiny Lipstick in Hollywood Starlet or no, Starlet Story. I always do that. This is going to be the lip that I try to dupe and it's only because of the fragrance, but I'll be honest, I've pushed myself past the fragrance because the color is that beautiful. If you're as fair as me and you struggle to find a true beige nude lip that's not corpse looking on you, you need this unless you have a strong aversion to fragrance. I will say that, but the shade absolutely phenomenal. All right, we are just about to the end. We're going to get into kind of miscellaneous and tools categories. So I do want to shout out a favorite product of the year. I have only had this since probably the first week of December, but I do, they're, they're outstanding. As far as multi-use products go, I think this is my favorite that I've ever used, and that is the Hindash Fluids. I am... Wearing them today as a full face, eyes, lips, and cheeks. I just have a gloss over my lips. That video has already gone up. Go check that out if you're interested. But they absolutely deserve an award for this year. They're just so good. And then I wanted to give you my favorite tools and brushes. 
So for tools, I called out individual items. The first is going to be the Amazon brush holder that I showed in my, what was it? Car makeup video. This has been a game changer for me when I want to pack just a handful of brushes, but I want to feel like they're protected in my makeup bag. I don't, I have some brushes that are expensive. Most of them are not expensive at all, but I still want to protect them because I love them for what they are. The shape, some of these, most of my brushes, honestly, they don't make anymore. And we can't have one of my brushes getting dented up in a bag. So I really love that thing. Fairly inexpensive. I believe it's under $15 and it has made a world of difference. I also love the color I got it in. It's a beige, so I feel like it's not going to get super gross with makeup because if anything gets all over stuff, it's usually foundation and concealer. So I really love that and recommend it. The second is going to be the Ruffer Vanity Organizers. I got these during the 50% off Black Friday sale, so I think they were $10 a piece. Oh, wow. The quality is great. I love that they're this really dark blue that's almost black. I'm looking at them over here. I love that they're customizable and magnetic and stick together, and they're customizable side by side, but also front to back. So you can really build out whatever works for you. If you're heavy in lip products, if you're heavy in palettes, the palette organizers, I love that it looks cohesive. I just, I'm really happy with those purchases. And it's the best organizers that I found, to be honest. And then the Eco Tool sponge. She's a good, she's the only sponge I'll buy. Biodegradable, says plant me right on it inexpensive, on sale all the time at Ulta, and just lovely and a joy to use. They're, I can't see the, those, excuse me, ever getting knocked off as my favorite sponge. Then as far as brushes go, we are going to get into some brush videos this year. I've already started typing those out and planning those, but I wanted to give you not specific brushes. One, because a lot of mine aren't made anymore, but two, brushes are so specific to the user and we're gonna get into that and how to find brushes for you in some of those brush videos I mentioned. So I just wanted to give you the best brands from a quality standpoint and number one is going to be Beauty Pie. I honestly think if you can swing it, it would almost be worth it to do a month of Beauty Pie or a year of beauty pie, whichever you need, a day pass of beauty pie for $10 just to load up on their brushes because they are so reasonably priced, but insane quality. Like we're talking around $13 a brush on the high end and the quality, the quality is so good. The closest I can think to compare it to price-wise is Real Techniques. I think these are better. Even when you put them up against Eco Tools, the quality is still better. These, although they might look like, yeah, it's a brush, they are nice, nice quality. And I'm holding up the Smith. They feel just as nice as the Smith, and these can run you $30, $40 a brush. I love all of the shapes that they offer. I hope that they consider bringing back some of the shapes from the holiday collection this year to carry like this contour. I really love the holiday collection this year. It's a lot of stippling brushes, which we'll get into another time, but I love stippling brushes, but the core line is also just absolutely fabulous. They blend like a dream. Best brand this year of brushes. Second is going to be rougher. I was skeptical too. I know there's a lot of sponsorships on YouTube. No, they do not. Nobody that I'm mentioning in this video knows who I am or that I'm making this video, but I know there are a lot of sponsorships, honestly by Beauty Pie, but by now I hope you know that I'm, I just like Beauty Pie. Second, also we're gonna do a wrap up video of the year for Beauty Pie, so you'll get all of my thoughts on the membership there. No, it is not for everyone. Anyway, two, I know that Refer is a lot of sponsorships, might seem disingenuine. I got all of the stuff that I got from them at 50% off at two different times this year. 
And the reason I was interested in Ruffer, and I think that you have to know this going into it, is that they are natural fiber bristles and they are goat hair. And I personally really like working with goat hair brushes. Again, we'll get into all of that in a brush video. They're worth it. I have washed mine repeatedly. I've used mine repeatedly and I'm very happy with the performance. It is so much better than Morphe and you can get them at 50% off for like $10, $15 a brush. So again, I think it's a phenomenal deal and I would highly recommend Refer if you, especially if you can get them on sale. And then third place is Rare Beauty. I, dang, her brushes are good. The foundation and the concealer brush and the eyeshadow brush. That eyeshadow brush is so underrated and no one talks about it, but it is perfect for cream shadows because it almost has a finger-like shape and it's dense enough that it picks up the cream and lays it down beautifully and then you can even buff it out at the edges. It's a beautiful brush for that, but the foundation and the concealer is outstanding. Before I got my hands on the Beauty Pie, that was hands down my favorite brush, period. So yeah, and then I think as just an honorable mention, Eco Tools, I feel like is hard to go wrong. As long as they're in the shape that you want, mine have lasted years and years and years. I have some that are 10 years old and still going strong and have been washed for 10 years. So I would absolutely put them as honorable mention. And I can't believe we did it, but we did it. And I talked about everything. If there's something in specific that you want to know more about, let me know down below. Let me know what some of your favorites were this year or products that like really kind of changed the game for you. I hope that this was fun. Lord knows how long this is. Thank you if you've made it this far. If you have, let's do a purple heart for Frank because he's been a champ hanging out in the chair sleeping while I do this. He just gave me a big stretch and yawn. He's like, mom, I'm ready to get out of here too. But yes, thank you for sticking around. I hope that you had an amazing 2022 and an amazing start to 2023. I'm so excited to be back in the saddle regularly. Like if you watch my latest get ready with me, we're back and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.